In finite math for business, we're going to look at some of the applications that involve business. Particularly, we're going to look at business questions where we can use algebra to figure out the answers. Our first example is break-even analysis. If we visit a website about business planning, we see a break-even calculator. And we see at the beginning of this, break-even analysis is an expected component of most business plans. If we scroll down the website, we see that it asks us for average revenue, average cost per unit, and then the estimated fixed cost. We'll see both the revenue, the per item cost and the fixed cost in many of the word problems that we're asked to solve. If we take a look at the results, we see that to break even, that is to have a profit of zero, we need to sell 166.7 units and have a monthly revenue of $16,666. So this type of calculating is done by algebra, and that's one of the applications that we'll look at. Another application is to use the Consumer Price Index. The Consumer Price Index is a measure of the change of prices. The reference point is 1982 to 1984. You'll see that I listed a number of years in the chart here, but again, we can visit the website and we'll find that they have consumer price listed by month since 1913 the whole way up to 2013 and it won't be long until they have 2014 filled in as we complete the months. Again, how do we solve these problems? Well, we use algebra. Another question that can be answered with algebra is looking at investments. MSN Money gives six best ways to invest. So they suggest contributing to your retirement, contributing to an exchange traded fund, which is similar to a mutual fund, buy a bedrock stock, this is one with very low risk, update your home, particularly doors and bathrooms are a good investment, invest in yourself by starting a side business, or pay down your debt. But truly, which is the best choice for you? Well, it depends. It depends on what the interest rate is on your debt. It depends on what the return rate is on the stock or the traded fund. It depends how close you are to retirement as to what is best for you. So in general, when we're investing, if there is a low risk, there is also a low return. So this means that low risk, you're not going to lose the money. It would be very, very rare. Things like putting your money in a bank where the federal government insures your money, very, very rare to lose your actual investment. However, the interest rates at the bank are also very low. At the other end of the spectrum, there is a much higher risk. This would be things like investing in the stock market. Because in the stock market, you could lose your actual principal, the amount that you invest. However, there's a reward for putting your money there, the high potential return. This diagram gives us some ideas. So cash at the bank, low risk, low return. Bonds, a little bit higher. Property, especially in light of our recent mortgage crisis, a little bit higher risk, but also a little higher return. And then shares, so the stock market, is our higher risk and higher return. There's lots of questions, though. How much can you invest? How much risk can you sleep with? Are you comfortable with the thought that you could lose your hard-earned money? How much do you need to make? So what are your investment goals? And then what is the potential for return on your investment? Once we know the answers to some of these questions, like the return rate and how much we need to make, we can use algebra to answer some of the other questions, like how to invest our money. So in summary, some of the business problems that we can solve with algebra are break-even analysis, problems involved with the consumer price index, and problems involving how to invest once we've determined what type of investments we're comfortable with.